It's a good good wine. It was a good year. Shabbat shalom, everyone. Shabbat shalom. On these high holy days, we spent some time thinking about life because it was the central theme. We prayed for life, for a good life, for a long life. Zohreinu l'chaim, remember us for life. Yet life exposes us to unfortunate experiences and puts us to us hard tests, such as Avraham had to confront. What of our frustrations and ordeals? How do we face tough times? Rosh Hashanah celebrates the creation of the world, crowned by the creation of human life. We call it Hayom Harat Olam. Let us then seek guidance about the creation of life and life from this week's portion, which is the great creation epic of the Torah. The opening chapter of our Tanakh describes the creation of a good world. Vayar Elohim Kitov, and God saw that it was good. And that is bracketed at the end of the seventh day, Vayar Elohim, at Kol Asher Asa, Vehine Tov Ma'od. And God saw all that God had made, and it was very good. And yet darkness forms part of the world. Vayavdel Elohim, Bein Ha'or Uvein Ha'choshech. And God divided the light from the darkness. Vayikra Elohim la'or yom v'la'choshech kara layla. And God called the light day, and darkness God called night. But our sages observe on this naming of, of the light and the darkness, said if the darkness would be called Erev, evening instead of night, then the flood would not have come later to engulf the world. A striking comment, which may offer us a way towards a solution to the dark times we face in our lives and in our world. Darkness forms part of the scheme of nature. The sun rises and the sun sets and darkness follows. How do we get regard the darkness as the end of light or the eve of a new dawn? What do we call darkness, our sages ask? Our sages taught that Judaism looks upon darkness as the forerunner of a new day. They would have called darkness evening, the eve of a bright tomorrow. In this spirit, the Hebrew calendar begins the 24-hour cycle with the evening and ends the cycle with the day. Indeed, the creation story itself has this refrain. Vayi erev, vayi voker, yom achad, yom sheni, yom shlishi. And it was evening, it was morning, the, a first day, a second day, a third day. This hardening message at the very beginning of the Torah could be heated, and we'd be well to heat it at the beginning of every enterprise, whether it is a career, a relationship, or a new year. All of us stand in need of this confident outlook on life. Most of us have reason to be grateful for periods of joy and happiness, achievement and grace, which are given oftentimes beyond what merit we have. These are seen as a reflection of God's light, God's salvation. But we also cannot escape moments of anguish nor avoid periods of frustration. Sooner or later, dark clouds appear on the seemingly bright horizon, cast gloom on our existence, and test our faith. What do we then call the darkness? How do we react to difficult experiences, to a pandemic? We naturally tend to consider them as evil or as horrific. The darkness we fear will become an endless night. 
But we are to karala choshech erev, to call it evening, not night. At such moments of gloom and despair, we need to summon the inspiration offered by our sages. Karala choshech erev. Don't call it night, call it evening. The creative spirit, the divine spark within us drives us to look beyond the painful present to a promising tomorrow, which will yet permit us to behold a bright day. It was evening and it was morning. There was a sunset, but it was always followed by a sunrise. Two travelers, one a veteran and the other a novice, were climbing in the Pyrenees. At night, they were caught on one of the peaks and had to sleep on a ledge. Toward morning, a storm came up and the howling wind wailed fiercely among the heights. The frightened novice awakened his friend and said, I think it's the end of the world. Oh no, said the veteran. This is how dawn comes to the Pyrenees. Again and again, darkness has descended upon the world and challenged human faith and courage. The response often determines the results. To take one striking at the end of the first millennia of the common era, 1,000 years ago, there was a certain segment of the European population which believed that the end of the world was at hand. Those were the dark ages when ignorance, superstition, poverty, and plagues darkened the horizon of human existence. Those who lacked faith in the human spirit called the darkness night. They did not have the vision to foresee the bright tomorrow that would dawn heralding the Renaissance and the era of enlightenment. But the Jews of that era called the darkness evening and helped usher in the golden age of Provence and Spain. Characteristically, the leading scholar and the guide of Jewry during that time was Rabbi Gershom Meor Hagola, the light of the diaspora. Jewish history may be summed up with the phrase, Kara Lahoshech Erev. They called the, e the darkness evening. Repeatedly, gloom enveloped the Jewish world. Exile, persecution, calumny, discrimination created darkness in many climes where Jews dwelt. Yet faith in Bore Olam, the creator of the world, and trust in humanity generated in the Jewish people a creative spirit which refused to call the darkness an endless night. They believe that the one who forms light and creates darkness is also an Oseh Shalom, a maker of peace. The darkness would pass and the light of a good society and peaceful world would follow. The creation of Israel as a Jewish sovereign state after a darker than dark era of Nazism offers a striking evidence that suns rises always follow sunsets and is part of the eternal faith of the Jew. The people who sang Anima Amin, I believe, and Zugna Kane Malas to Gates and Lutz and Veg, don't think you've walked your final road. We're dreaming of a Nayim Tug, a new day, even under the lash of the Nazi fiends, and help prepare for a new dawn that broke on Zion in the world, an Or Hadash Alzion that did Ta'ir. We live in an era where darkness seems poised to engulf us. The water supply in the West is drastically drying up. Fires come with more frequency and more ferocity throughout the West. There are climate refugees that have been displaced from their homes and their locations. We know it well in California. Paradise, California is no more. We have come in an age with call out culture and cancel culture. And if you come up with an idea, I'll be ready to blow it down and to tell you how bad you are. That seems to be a lack of civility in our world. There has been an impulse to take away workers' rights and the human rights of people worldwide. Any of these and all of these 
have combined to create a climate of darkness among us and sometimes even within us. But the message of our sages implies that in such times we can help avert the flood of darkness by an act of faith. Let us call the darkness evening. It need not overwhelm us if we summon all the creative and benign forces within us and in each other to make the world a better place. There is light within this dark predicament, and it is between you and you and you and you. The Talmud tells a striking story concerning Adam, the very first human that we also read on Shabbat Rashid. Adam was created on the morning of the sixth day when late in the afternoon he saw the sun go down and set. Adam became frightened. This is the end of the world, he exclaimed. Soon the night passed and the dawn came and the sun rose again. And Adam rose up and praised Hashem for the miracle, the birth of a new day. Even so, it may be given to us on this day when we celebrate the birth of the world on Shabbat Reshit. Let us pray that we will be privileged to behold the dawn of a new day each and every day this year. And that so will not only our generation, but the next generation and that we can call this era the eve of a glorious creative day for a regenerated and newly empowered and loving humankind. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom.